Hey everyone, MY's Brennan Quinn here alongside Nick Baumgartner, Matt Wenzel following Michigan's 41-8 win over visiting Illinois. It was easy as expected for the Wolverines, but Nick, let's start with Wilton Spate. Jim Harbaugh said that he thought it was perhaps his best performance of the year. What say you? Yeah, hard to argue. I mean, it gets a Big Ten team, not a good Big Ten team at all, but the things that we uh, have written about all season that he needs to be better at, which are the, I, I've been calling them the free yards when they're there, the open right. throws. Uh, Harbaugh called it the intermediate game. I think that's all. That all sums it up. I mean, he was good in the 15 to 25 yard range. Where in weeks past, those plays have been open. He'd miss throws. I mean, uh, I can't think of too many that he overshot or undershot today. I think he was on the money with most everything. Had a couple drops. Good day. It was a really good day for him and a really good start to the second half of the season for Wilson Spade. And other side of the field, Illinois could not get anything going in the <laughs> passing game. As much to do with their own. You know, lack of talent, frankly, and uh, Michigan's pass defense. But you, you talked to some of the guys about the secondary. Um, they seem to be taking a certain level of pride in domination, essentially. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Illinois, they were without their starter, Wes Lunt. Um, they were without their backup guy, Chase Crouch. So they're starting uh, third stringer, Jeff George Jr., the son of the former NFL player. And um, yeah, he struggled, to say the least. Uh, 0 for 7, I believe, in the first. Yeah, yeah. first half, yeah. Yeah, they didn't complete a pass in the first half. Uh, they had an interception. And, yeah, Michigan, I think Jordan Lewis is the one who said, you know, they're licking their chops when they see a guy that's a third stringer coming in, and this is for the you know, the number one pass defense in the nation. To boot. Yeah. 15 I, completions in 12 quarters for this pass defense. <laughs> that's what it's at right now. It's gracious. Well, yeah. um, all that said, I think the, the biggest thing about this game was getting to the next game, mm -hmm. frankly. Um, sure. This, this was – this was not even a matchup that I don't even think was on anyone's radar as being a possibility of being competitive. And the biggest news is what comes next and how does Michigan handle this week? And what did you see, Nick, from the way everyone tried to frankly get baited into questions, I think in the post game, to say something that would stir that pot up and everyone just kind of stayed in their lane and said, we haven't oh, beaten them in a long time. The so. annual food fight at the kids <laughs> table, as I've called it. Uh, no, I mean, everybody, Wanted to ask those guys about that last play last year, the, the punt. And really, the seniors will tell you that that, you know, while, while that play stings them, uh, Taco Charlton said it, he goes, you know, we haven't beat those guys. They've never won they've never beat them. Uh, the seniors, the four years, fourth year seniors, they got here in 2013, they've lost every time they played Michigan State. That ultimately uh, is the biggest motivating factor. Right. The punt thing was bad, they say, but they've never won there. Mm -hmm. They've lost up there twice. Um, they're the better football team. And they feel like they, they like it's time. You know, Taco said it best. He said, "We want to win a title. Michigan State's in the way, and right. we've got to take care of it." I don't think there's any way that there, you know, anyone who does say anything diplomatic this week of, you know, I haven't thought about that play or had done that. I think it's uniform across the board that everyone has been waiting since last year to to get sure. back on the field. Kind of goes without um, saying. And that goes. I, I think it goes for everyone. I think fans, media, everyone has wanted to see this game, but I don't see. The way that the direction that these two programs are going, I mean, Michigan might be the hottest team in America right now. Yeah, they're um, up there with Alabama and Ohio State. Sure, yeah. and I mean, what do you, what do you think is the biggest thing Michigan needs this week in terms of you know, not making it too big? Maybe I think that's maybe yeah, the only thing it. that they could do wrong. Yeah, that you're right. I mean, that's a good point. I think you just do your job, right. stay healthy, go to work, show up and do what you're supposed to do, and you win the football game. It is literally that simple. They're so much better than Michigan State talent-wise. Uh, right now and everything else do your job show up don't make it any bigger than it needs to be but also don't overlook it of course but just show up if you show up and play the way you're supposed to play whatever the spread is you cover it sure i mean ultimately that's how that's going to go so um they've got to just stay within themselves and just keep playing football we'll see it'll be a long week for, i think for everyone uh, waiting until next saturday but uh, in between then we will have podcasts we'll have a special podcast with oh. michigan state beat writer <laughs> kyle austin joining the crew and uh all kinds of other good stuff. The, the, the two-minute right. drill uh, will also feature Kyle, so we will give you everything you need leading up to next week's Michigan-Michigan State game. And until then, for Nick, for Matt, I'm Brendan. Thanks for watching.